Last week, Eric and I designed and built a large wooden lip in my backyard. It backs up to a row of bushes behind the garage to keep it stealth when it's not in use. To make it operational, we simply inflate a wedge-shaped bouncy castle on the other side of the bushes to use as a landing. Flying out of the trees and seeing an airbag lander appear beneath you is quite the experience. But now that the work is done and we have this extremely fun thing in our possession, it won't stop raining. As we found out, even a little moisture turns this airbag into a slip and slide. Worse yet, this relatively new trail hasn't hardened enough to shed water. Yeah. We're on mountain bikes, so we got that going for us. We'll tune it up and improve the drainage at a later date. But for now, we need to get it good enough to ride the airbag today. We'll lay some fresh dirt down on key problem areas and then use scrap plywood on the approach to keep ruts from forming. We'll give this some time to dry out, and then have a look at my new bike. I traded Eric my trials bike for one of his dirt jumpers, and I'm really happy with my end of the deal. This thing is stiff, lightweight, and packed with some of the best parts you can get. Since Diamondback doesn't currently make a dirt jumper, this is a really special bike. Every time I get on a dirt jumper, I feel like a fish out of water because it doesn't feel like a BMX and it doesn't feel like a trail bike. A dirt jump specific bike like this one feels totally different than a normal mountain bike. And to some of you, that may sound strange. Back in 2017, I converted a hardtail trail bike into a single speed and many of you pointed out that I had basically created a dirt jumper. It looks like a dirt jumper, and you can certainly use it to do a lot of the things that dirt jumpers are great for. But it's not a DJ bike. It's still a trail bike. A dirt jump frame has totally different geometry than a trail bike. It's made to fit smaller 26-inch wheels. It's also set up for a shorter, stiffer fork, and a more BMX-like seat post. While these features make dirt jumpers truly terrible for riding technical trails, Hitting jumps on this thing is amazing. So today on my new dirt jump bike, we'll find out if you can teach an old dog new tricks. Hit it like normal, and when you're starting to peek out, you push the, push the bike out. Today, Eric is convinced that he can teach me how to do no-handers. I gotta do a better job of tucking the seat between my knees. To some people, doing air tricks comes naturally. Take Kevin, for instance. It took him many tries just to get over the mainframe. And believe it or not, but he still hasn't done the roll-in off the flight deck. When are you gonna do this roll-in? I don't know, man, to be honest with you. The bike's gonna crunch, and I'm just gonna face plant on the ground. But give him a jump, and he's taking all sorts of hands and feet off his bike. Meanwhile, I'll happily ride any scary feature, and even throw 360s. But taking my hands off my bike is a non-starter. I won't do it. To this day, I tend to jump hunched over and hold my bike close to me in the air. Learning to do it another way would be like learning to jump all over again. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Oh. So the difference between a suicide no-hander and a tuck no-hander is the suicide, you pinch the seat with your knees. Tuck no-hander, you pull the bars in, tuck them in your waist. I'm confident I can teach you how to do a suicide no-handers in your own backyard. Now that's a scarier name than tuck no-hander. Yeah, no one's scared of tucking anything. I need to get my weight over the center of the bike instead of the front and put some distance between me and the handlebars. So once you get up towards the top, push the bars out. What that's doing is puts the seat in between your knees. So the first time you go off the jump, push your bike out, pinch the seat, and then you go one of these. You can do jazz hands if you want. You'll just start to feel that, oh, everything's cool. Once I achieve this neutral body position, I can push the bike forward so the seat rests between my knees. I don't even feel like I am, I'm at where I'm supposed to be with the seat, so I'm gonna keep trying. Yeah, keep working on the pinch. That's yeah. the, once you have that, everything else is like two runs. Cool. Yeah. So the big hurdle is unlearning my bad habits and committing this new way of jumping to muscle memory. It's important that I don't rush this because this airbag isn't necessarily going to save me. Like other training tools, an airbag can give you a false sense of safety. 
Even on a dirt lander, it's not the ground you need to worry about, it's your bike. Even in a foam pit, you can get amazingly hurt if your bike lands on top of you. So when jumping on anything, you need to recognize when you're in trouble, and then get your bike as far away from you as possible. That aside, the airbag can be a great training tool. Clearly these wrecks could have been much worse. Once you get into the right position, no-handers can be an incremental trick. Oh, that was better. Even without an airbag lander, you can safely learn these in tiny steps. He's gonna get it this time. I saw it on the camera and I was like, ah! Now you do a hundred more and you develop your own style. Everyone thinks stuff comes easy and it doesn't. No, it never comes easy. Yeah. When I was a kid, I would learn tr new tricks all the time. You know, like you're not stuck in your ways, but I was stuck jumping a certain way for my entire life. I'm 34 years old. I've been jumping for over 20 years, which is <laughs> stupid to even think. So now I can work on bar spins. Yeah, bar spins will be easy. Should I just go try and throw a bar spin? You shouldn't try and throw a bar spin. You should throw a bar spin. With my newfound ability to take hands off my bike, I was dead set on learning bar spins before Eric left. But we were losing light fast. I hit the jump, I had to decide whether I was in the right position to throw the bars. And with the light fading quickly, I wasn't feeling so confident. By the time I had made two bar spin attempts, it was getting really dark. Our cameras went into potato mode, and I finally decided it was a bad idea to keep trying bar spins that day. All right, I'm gonna put it down. We just had like another 15 minutes of daylight. We can focus on what you didn't get, or we can focus that you put 25 tries into at least the suey. You hate taking your hands off your bars, and you got that. I attempted the bar spin twice. I know I'm going to get it soon, but I want to get it today. But uh, no, you're making uh, you're growing up, Seth. You're making good adult decisions. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> that was so sick! I caught it like this! After finally landing a trick, the work has really just begun. You need to go back out and do the trick bigger and better. Yeah! Even if you don't have a training tool like an airbag, you can still learn tricks like no-handers. You'll need to hit the same jump over and over, get your body position right, 
Take your fingers off, and then finally, both hands. Do it safely. Do it in tiny increments. At 34 years old, I'm happy to report that landing a new trick feels the same as it did 20 years ago. Unfortunately, not landing it feels decidedly worse than it did 20 years ago. But I guess that just comes with age. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time. on that one. Uh oh. Well, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. No. No, I'm afraid that's not good.